Biafra is a call for referendum. Those who Not talk about law, those who talk about bloodshed, those who talk about confusion, have is that if you have a problem and you are talking quietly and peacefully, nobody listens to you unless you begin to blow up things and make Fetishing trouble. everything racial, everything ethnic, and we come to the table. And work if indeed we are Nigerians, then we must come to the table and allow every segment of this country a sense of belonging so that these agitations will be passed and we will keep us see the opportunities that are about to Somebody saying that I want to be on my so, own. Somebody saying you must go on your own. Please take it easy. Our youth, please take it easy. Our elders, please take it easy. I think we are better. better. Yes. Yes. When we are barely expressing ourselves as provided under the Constitution, the right of freedom of worship. From 1970 to the present, a generation of Nigerians who were born did not know we had a civil war. And I, have, I know a lot of young people who do not know Nigeria fought the war. This policy of being an ostrich and not addressing issues is counterproductive. If you lived in America, you know you had the Vietnam War, which happened at the same time as the Nigerian Civil War. You had the Korean War, you had the First World War, you had the Second World War. You have all kinds of wars. And they talk about it all the time. If you watch the Discovery Channel, you can see all the wars in the world. And the reason they televise these wars is so that you can learn from the mistakes of others, so that you do not become a fool and make the same mistakes and fight again. And if you don't want us to express ourselves by talking about Biafra, are you calling for war? Biafra is not a call for war. Yes. It is only blackmailers that say that Biafra is a call for war. Under your head up, under my courage, under your hip hop, I'm only a FPC, I'm a leader that FPC. And we will say it in the bad way, I'm only a leader of war. Biafra is a call for referendum. Nothing more, nothing less. And how do you have to say that you will not abide by the need to vote for a friend? If you vote for a friend today, and those who are in support of Biafra do not win by at least 90%, our commission is So here we are 50 years later, talking about something that could have been avoided if the federal government at the time understood the value of history. So one, we erased the civil war from a consciousness. So a generation of people do not know we fought the war or why we fought the war. They say the Igbos were marginalized, right? They fought the war, they lost. Today, they are the most industrious people in the country today. They are the richest Nigerians in the country today. They're one of the most educated people in Nigeria today. Yet, yet, they feel marginalized. If you compare the Igbo man to the other sectors of the society, you would say the Igbos are very privileged because of what they have. Yet, a generation of Igbos say they are marginalized and they want to succeed and they want a nation. Well, yes, a young generation of people who have never seen bloodshed, war, destruction, people being killed and protected, families being divided, sure they can think like that. But what have we done as a nation to educate them about the destruction of war? Absolutely nothing. We do not teach this in our history books. We do not tell our children what war is all about. It's easy to talk about war. How many people have carried a gun? An AK-47, a machine gun, a machete. How many people have carried a gun? How many people have used a gun? How many people have fired a shot? How many people? Those who talk about war, those who talk about bloodshed, those who talk about confusion, have never carried a gun. So how do they know how people die? The president is simply to put the box through. Those in support, yes. Those who are against, no. Put the two boxes. For no, like I can think, they are here. Where is a young man? Any one at all. Stand here, young boy. Why is it difficult for the elites to join up? So that they may have more Nigeria in here than there. Because Nigeria is sick beyond limit. Nigeria is the only country in the world where every single project that is put in government is put with a plan to steal some money. That is the truth. Third man on the bridge. Third, uh, third Niger bridge. Where are you? 
Missing blood, and yet here we are debating a subject that we as a nation should understand. The educational system does not teach it, and our people do not understand it, and the federal government of Nigeria do not recognize it. And so my position is different. If the federal government will not recognize a fundamental problem in our educational system, a fundamental problem on how television is viewed across the country, then we have a fundamental problem. So what we are saying in summary is that it is not true that the laws of Nigeria do not give us space to agitate for our rights as a people. Go and see every section of the constitution with, that provides for our fundamental human rights. We have never exhausted any of it. But the truth of the Nigeria is, is that it is the individuals who are running the Nigerian state who are angry, who don't like the people to the globe, that are suppressing it. Today they are saying that the trailers in Apapa are making life difficult in Apapa, correct? How did that come about? When Obasan just stopped the importation of textiles from Portacot Wharf, everybody is now forced to go to Lagos. Portacot Wharf is empty. If you allow those people who are importing through Lagos to all pass through Portacot and the Calabar and the Warri, you wouldn't have that congestion in Lagos. They are making it seem as if solving the green lock in Lagos requires rocket science. It's not. There is suppression of business interests aimed at suffocating the demon. And we must be bold to address it. Because unless we do so, we do not work. And we must address the problem at the source. What is the problem? We are the problem. It could be Biafra today, it could be South South tomorrow, it could be North East the other day. It doesn't matter. The problem is we are not addressing the problem that unites or divides us. And this must be addressed. Our educational system is one of the worst I've ever seen in anywhere in the world. It is terrible. Our policy on information makes no sense whatsoever. And here we are talking about an impending crisis. Today, a lot of people are happy celebrating that Dangote is the richest man in the world. He's not richest in nothing. When you are giving a monopoly to a port cement, and the veto is stopped for many years so that only you will have a leeway and then you import the whole floor and then you import all the sugar and then you import all the salt and they stop it and they give you a waiver even if it's a moron, you will be the richest man in Africa So all the, all the monopoly legislation that is in Nigeria we must fight against it in the spirit of reality and we must work to take advantage of it. Because the truth remains that we have a voracious appetite for education, we have a voracious appetite for entrepreneurship, and we are strong believers in the right of our women. Anytime there is a suppression in the right of women, Ngibu are the worst victims. Because we have the largest army of educated women across this country. Forefront of every agitation to fight against the, to suppress women's rights. Our women should not be like Guarish wife. Their position is not in the kitchen. The problem today in Nigeria, Mr. President, is that if you have a problem and you are talking quietly and peacefully, nobody listens to you unless you begin to blow up things and make trouble. That is why you see all, every section of this country, people are trying to show their capacity to self-destruct as if that in any way helps in improving their lot. We must, as a country, begin to listen to people when they are not creating problems. That is part of what we are not doing. I am from River State, I'm from Ogoni. My own people, we have been agitating for years, but our agitation has always been peaceful. It is time that we give the peaceful agitators some attention 
so that everybody does not have to create problems before we can discuss their issues in this country. I want to thank all those that have supported this motion, but to say that more important than what we say here in the Senate is what we do in our different constituencies and states, is what we do to give all Nigerians a sense of belonging. I think that that is a foundation on which a stronger, more prosperous and more successful union of all Nigerians will be built. I condemn in very, very clear terms any action by any group or section of our country that tends to limit the rights of other Nigerians, whether in that their own section of the country or in any other section of the country. No Nigerian, whether from the southeast or from the north or from the west or from the south-south, should be allowed to do anything that threatens the rights of other Nigerians to live peacefully in every part of this country. That is where we should stand as a nation, and that is where I stand as a senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you. And in case you forget, because I will close. One commits an offense if there is a law written down clearly for me. Show me any law that says you cannot hang a Biafra flag in Nigeria and that will be guilty. Show me any law. Nowhere. So they have the right. So is there a law against the color or the design or the this? Supposing you break your car in Biafra flag, would they arrest the car? Supposing you break your house in Biafra flag, would they arrest the house? And I must say that we must find a way to begin to enjoy this right, stop taking advantage of our legal system, and bringing all this over 10 billion naira to waste every year to train our children out of the people land back home. But I will conclude by saying that we must work hard to save this language. If the language continues to die at the rate it's going, I goodness and mercy shall follow me. How can you pray in evil and then be sure the goodness and mercy shall follow me? I have asked them in different Pentecostal churches. Surely I will be in the Bible. That is the last part of our woman during the day, which we all learned in the primary school. Next year, if the man they break up, so nobody will learn them. Why do you say it in English after praying in evil? It is very, very crucial for us as Nigerians to live in peace and harmony. And I believe that our fathers and our the patriarchs and the matriarchs of our great nation has really looked into that before they came up with our motto for our coat of arms. But um, I will add only a personal experience that I had just only recently. I was traveling from a flight from London to Lagos. And I looked around in the cabin. I saw a lot of foreigners around me. And that tells me that something is happening in Nigeria, but only Nigerians cannot see it. And we discovered that even in the day, in the years past, when we were taken away on slavery, this is how the came, foreigners came in form of missionaries. We benefited a lot, that's not the issue. But you see, what people see in us, we as Nigerians don't even see the opportunities that are bound in this great nation. In conclusion, many people wonder that she said, why never have what I am going to do? And by 1970, we are
Many people don't appreciate these two quotes now, but they go way back. One during the war, when we were young, and we were harboring our, our um, neighbors who were either Igbos or Hausas. And that was the time when the unity of Nigeria was most important. And the slogan then was, to keep Nigeria one is a task that must be done. And it was done then. Also, with our national anthem, it was something that bound us together as a people. And we all grew up knowing everything across all divides. In fact, I was amazed that we're taking this today because June 12 is also a situation, a time where we had an election that broke all the barriers. It broke the barrier of race. It broke the barrier of religion. And Nigerians came together and voted, and they, are, they were with one voice. Also, a situation here in the Senate, where when the issues of unity and development that concerns Nigeria comes to the fore, we all jettison everything racial, everything ethnic, and we come to the table and work for Nigeria. I believe that is what Nigeria is about. I believe the God that put us together in his wisdom knew that we needed to work together. Then, what's up? I was told about the civil war by my father who was conscripted into the Nigerian army and has told us that there is nothing that is more than unity, peace, tranquility and living harmoniously irrespective of our diversity. The northeast, the north central, and the southwest. Obviously, if you talked about marginalization or even talking about separation of going a different way, I think the people that ought to now speak about going a different way are the northeastern part of Nigeria, which obviously we were within the southern province. Because as of today, in the United Nations, we are still a custodian, and if we want to go a separate way, no person can tell us no. But we believe that because of the plebiscite of 1959 made us to be part of Nigerians and we allowed ourselves to be Nigerians irrespective of our grievances and the marginalization that has been unleashed on the northeastern part of this country. But still, sir, like I said and I will continue to say, since the invent of democracy in 1999 to date, the northeastern part of this country has now gotten up to 3% the highest it has gotten was 3% of the infrastructural development in the budgetary allocation. But nevertheless, sir, we have accepted to be Nigerians, irrespective of our diversity. Hate words cannot go take us anywhere. Social media is not even helping matters. We've heard of stories here and there. But the most important thing is to ask ourselves a question. Are we truly patriotic in our, I mean, as Nigerians? Do we want to be Nigerians first before an individual or collective geopolitical zone? If indeed we are Nigerians, then we must come to the table and allow every segment of this country a sense of belonging so that these agitations will be passed, I mean, will be kept aside. But we are all here. When it is good, we are Nigerians. When it is not good, then we talk about regional uh, differences. But please and please, for the sake of posterity, let us know that some people have paid for the unity of this country. They have sacrificed innocent blood for us to be where we are today. May we be part of those people that will upheld the unity of this country so that our children yet unborn will not I mean, will not, I mean uh, continue the good work where we have stopped. Thank you. Mr. President, my respected colleagues, perhaps what people don't know is this. The time for people to 
now get split into different, different tiny uh, states. It's gone. It was part of the world history. But now that time is gone. It's there today. Countries are expanding. Countries are trying to expand. Look at China, for example. They have the highest population in the world. But China, you know the history of China and even Hong Kong. The recent history of Hong Kong, how China aggressively decided that they must take over Hong Kong from the British rule. And of course, you know the history between China and Taiwan, the one China policy. In spite of that population, huge population, they are number one in the world in terms of population. They are number four in the world in terms of geographical area. Nigeria is just number seven in the world population. Number seven, we are number seven. And when you talk about geographical area, we are number 32. So why are we talking about splitting? Somebody saying that I want to be on my own. Somebody saying you must go on your own. Please take it easy. Our youth, please take it easy. Our elders, please take it easy. I think we are better together. Thank you for the opportunity. My distinguished colleagues, the Igbo have a saying. I will say it in Igbo and then I will interpret it. Now, I'm ready to go to the world. I'm going to go to What it says here is this that the reason that you have elders is so that children don't go and eat beetle and call it weevil. Because it is only the elder that will tell the child, this one is not edible, it's a beetle. This one is a weevil, because they all look alike. The reason why we are here as senators is that we are elders of this country, and we should tell our children which one is a beetle and which one is a whiff. That is a word for the wise. Thank you very much.